Welcome, Thunderbird Nation, to the Thunderbird Coaches Show. I'm your host, John Smith. With me, as always, is our beloved head football coach, Delane Fitzgerald. And we have a special guest in the studio with us today, ladies and gentlemen. Southern Utah University Director of Athletics, Doug Newth, is in the building. Welcome, gents. Howdy. Welcome, boss. Howdy. <laughs> Thanks for finally being invited here. Fine, yeah, yes, yes. Well, we, we uh, save the best for last. Uh, we've, been, we've been just excited and uh, anticipating your arrival here on the show, so we're glad to have you. Um, look, I before we get into, into the show today... Um, there's a lot of good stuff going on in the world. Uh, we got a winning season in the football department. That is awesome. Uh, there's a little extra heat in the room. I don't know. I don't know if it's because uh, Delane, you actually sent me some some topics and some notes for the show. You're excited. You got a lot of good things uh, that we're we're gonna review or the show. Or maybe it's just Doug Newth is here and he brings the level of the heat up in every room he enters. I mean, I, I just. I'm excited to be here today. Boss man brought smoke today. Yeah, he did. Yeah, for for those of y'all out there watching and listening, um, we didn't slight the players today. This is uh, Thanksgiving break for us. Um, our young men are at home, um, getting a well deserved week off. Um, after this week, we'll get it tuned back up on Monday. <laughs> Always working, baby. Always. Always working. Well, coach. Speaking uh, speaking of uh, our athletes, uh, we had a, a phenomenal showing. We had the Battle of the Axe. Uh, what, 45 minutes down I-15? What do they call it? The Feud on 15? Is that feud on 15. the Devin Dixon stamped Feud on 15? Um, just for the, the people at home, this is just a preview of the show today. We have attained and uh, we've, we've got the axe in the building. Uh, it's, it's a nice heavy uh, uh, trophy. I like this trophy. This is, this is, this is well done. Coach, let's, uh, let's recap the, the Thunderbirds' victory over... Uh, the Utah Tech Trailblazers in the Battle of the Axe. Yeah, so, slow start, John, as, as usual, has <laughs> become our calling card. We don't start very fast. Um, the, the head coach has got to fix that uh, the, this offseason, but started out slow. We're, we're down six to nothing into the first quarter. Had an opportunity at a chip shot field goal um, that we missed in the first quarter, but we go down six to nothing. Second quarter, get, get hot as a firecracker, um, playing really, really well on offense and defense, and then we, we, go, we go up. 14 to 6 and then give up a field goal at the end of the half um john they, they had a scheme pretty well and their coaching staff had did a good job of having their players ready to play they sure. were playing hard yeah um they had our defense schemed and they were doing some things run game that gave us a problem um but we had issues defensively gap integrity gap integrity and then we had issues tackling through the first quarter got them straight at the end of the first quarter our offense started playing faster our defense started holding gap integrity started tackling just things worked out better we go into halftime we're down we're up we're up at halftime, 14-9. to nine. Um, The guys have a good look in their eye, especially our offensive line group and our running backs. Um, what a turnaround they had midway through the season. We could talk about that a little later. Absolutely. But just a great look in their eye, that, that run game group. Um, come out in the second half, and, and they score first. That that they score first in the third quarter and they they go up on us. Um, at, what, what was it? Uh, sixteen fourteen. Yeah, sixteen. They yeah. go up sixteen fourteen and that they're up for a few minutes on us. We drive the length of the field, hit hit a field goal. We're up seventeen sixteen. Um, our guys were positive all night. Just just not not our best football game. Not not the best football we've played in the last month. But the look in their eye and their their commitment and stick to itiveness and just, we're just not going to go away. Our guys were just not going to go away. We go up 17 to 16. Um, our players, uh, they made a couple runs at us. Had a couple drives where they're on our end of the field. One time they're in the red zone inside the 10-yard line. Our defense bends, but they don't break. We had three crucial turnovers in that game, two of them in the second half that, that really told the tale for us. Um, we managed to get another touchdown in, in the, at the end of the third quarter. We get another touchdown, go up 24-16. to 16. That ends up being the ending score. It ends up being the end of it all. Um, John, the difference in that football game. Our ability to run the football, our offensive line, tight ends, our running backs running the football on offense, and then flip over on defense, us turning them over. So three turnovers to zero, you're normally going to win. Three turnovers to zero, and Coach, uh, one thing that I know is near and dear to your heart is special teams. Block that extra point, block a field goal, they miss a field goal. Uh, you start adding those points up, difference in the game. Be, be, 
I'm, I'm going to be honest with you because I've been honest with everybody all fall. Um, that the reason I didn't mention special teams is is just not happy with some of the stuff we did on, on Saturday night, not happy with myself. I'm a big part of the special teams coaching staff here. Uh, we, we hadn't blocked field goal or PAT all year. So game 11, we blocked two. Now, uh, we, we block a kick, and then, and then we have a knucklehead that scoops the ball up on the five-yard line <laughs> and attempts to run it back. Uh, John, it's bad coaching on my part. It has to – from now on, it'll be a weekly reminder. Ball crosses the line of scrimmage. It's dead. You they can't it touch be. it. He was afraid they could scoop and score. Yeah, and didn't know the rules and scooped yeah. it up. It ended up being a negative 30-yard play for us because not only does he get tackled behind the line of scrimmage, but we get a penalty on top of it trying to block on the for return. Him on That's the right. return. Yep. And then we let them fake a punt on us. Um, I am the punt return coach here. Uh, I was told by, by assistant coaches last week that, that it was open for them to make that fake if they wanted to, and I just ignored it. Um, I, I, didn't think they, I didn't think they had it in them to fake it. So when we were attempting to block, we were attempting to block and scoop and score, and they ran rugby on us, and the kid yeah. kept it around the end. Zip, so, zip right around the end. It's a mistake yeah. by the head coach. <clears throat> well, not to point out, it was not my intention to point out any of those faults because. Um, you but know, t t tell tell the people the truth. You woke up this morning and say, I'm gonna, take, "I'm gonna take a couple I, jabs." I was so excited. I was my so la my last shot, <laughs> 2023. I was so jabs. excited for the block kicks um, that uh, yeah, I lost track of the fake punt and the uh, the the scoop and score opportunities. But yeah, Rob, uh, Robert Robert Horsey got his hands on that first yeah the first PAT, and then Connor Cullimore blocked the field goal. So what a game! Col Connor Cullimore had him a game. Uh, he, he's playing hurt. And he's a warrior, and he's out there doing his thing, and he gets a block punt, and he gets a strip uh, fumble, and he had, gets a huge hit on the quarterback. Had he, had he have not gotten the 15-yard penalties on, on Saturday night, it would have been one of the better defensive games I had seen a young man play. Yeah, but he was, look, a little bit about his character now. He, he, him and his family are first class. He comes up and grabs me and hugs me after the game. He said, I'm sorry. I said, don't be sorry. I said, we got away with it. Yeah. We, we, we got away with the two or three 15-yard penalties you had tonight, and you, you played your rear end off all night. But a good kid, good football player. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's talk a little bit about the vibe. I mean, we, we go in, it's a rivalry game. I know you don't like to say it's a rivalry game, but it is what it is. We got a trophy sitting on the desk here. So it's a rivalry game. Um, how did you keep your guys uh, focused? Usually, I mean, there's a lot of energy. I'd say this. Both teams, I thought, played um, – under somewhat control last year it was kind of a, a free-for-all this year i think both teams played with a little more poise uh what do you what do you attribute that to you wait till the weather breaks this spring okay i'm, I'm gonna show up with like a little glass bowl and we're gonna call it a tro it's gonna be a rivalry me and you on a golf course that's oh, right. you don't want hey, you don't want just this smoke coach. just just because you add a trophy to it does not make it a rivalry well and coming, we're still we're still a couple of years away from it being a rivalry there's got to be some history and tradition but before you can truly dislike each other building the history now you've only been here for two years but the dixie southern utah university rivalry goes back God, almost a hundred years we yeah. can we can debate this thing for a while this was like the sixth time since 1963 well, they played Plus, plus, I will say this: being uh, being someone that owned a trophy shop, I just I just like trophies, so I'm just hyped that we got we got a trophy on our side here. So they're gonna gonna need you to go back to your trophy shop days. Gonna need a nice one for me and you on a golf course this spring. Now, you, I, I might as well just keep it at my house. Where you have no <laughs> prayer. <laughs> Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for those y'all out there, yeah, he's he's pre pretty good on a golfing course now. Oh uh, shoot! Yeah, hey, he's but you're learning. Solid. You're you're he's getting better. Solid. You're getting better. Yeah, my, he, my age is getting ready to catch up with me. Yeah, yeah. let's switch back to football. Your age? Yeah, he's I, like I, he's I, like eight I, months older than me. I got Doug. us off track. I yeah, guess. you did. You. You, you asked about the focus. Yeah. Our, our coaching staff and our players are committed to keeping things business as usual. So last week, even though we're playing a team that's relatively close to us, we did the exact same thing we do every week. Sure. Um, wh whether that's good or that's bad, that's the way we handle our business. And, and our coaching staff and our players, it, it, we win or lose on Saturdays. We give it 24 hours. We get up on Sunday, and, and we, we, we go to church. We, we come home. We watch the film. We get a weight room session in. We get a walkthrough. The young men get Monday off to be general students. And then we're business as usual Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Um, I would go out on a limb and say it was it was probably probably made a little bigger emphasis. It, they, they came into the game at 2-8. and eight. It, It's a little bigger emphasis for them to try to end on a, on a – 
on a winning note and try to end with something positive. It's the only thing they're going to get out of this season. So th- their players kind of showed that on the field. They did. They played yeah, hard. They did. Yeah. So and we played like we normally play. Well, we yeah. always play hard. Our mentality. You, you asked about our focus. Um, that no lack of focus by our young men. It never was a lack of focus all last week pre-game at halftime they pretty dialed in physical football game is that was that by design let them feel you early let them know that you're out there um it looked to me like uh our guys were playing uh with i wouldn't say a chip on your shoulder because i think you played physical and, and strong all year but then maybe a little more of an emphasis to have little brother uh uh, staring you across the line there. They, they, they like finesse football. They like seven-on-seven seven football. They mean spread, spread it out. The, the team we were playing, yeah, got it. Um, the chuck and duck offense. The chuck um, and duck. And we're, we're, we're not going to participate in that. We like running through people's chests. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we mentioned uh, the physicality. We mentioned, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the offensive line play and the running backs. Let's focus on that just for a minute. Uh, we had two over 100 yard rushers. 100 mm-hmm. was 135 and 128, something like that. Yeah. Uh, so 141. Coach, coach Derry Smith, lifetime running backs coach. Um, but he'd been a running backs coach hey, since we were roommates 21 years ago. How wow. about that? Wow. Um, but he, I asked him after the game, I said, How many times in your career have you had two guys go for over 100 in a game? And he said, Five times. Wow. So that'll tell you how rare it is for that to happen. Um, but but the, those two, those two, and it, I want to go back and start with this. Middle way through the season, we were 119th out of 121 rushing. So we were 119 out of 121 running the football. Now, some of that's the caliber of opponents that we started sure. the season yeah, with. Absolutely. Yeah, playing Hard FBS to run on. teams. Yes. Yeah. We finished the season top 50 in the country. So 46th or 49th in the country in rushing yards. Um, but but it just finished the last five weeks. We were really good running the football. Um, proud of those young men. And, and John, we have, we have some good young men behind them. Our O line's good, and the guys backing them up are really good. They're good. They're young, and they're deep. Our running backs are good, and the guys backing them up are good. Now, the challenge for the charge for our football staff is: is we got to go out and recruit. We've got to go out and find another group of offensive linemen going to be good, as good or better than them. Yeah. Same thing with our running backs. Absolutely. Well, shout out to uh, Coach Darius Smith, uh, running back coach, and also Coach White, uh, offensive line. It seemed like about five weeks ago. I don't know what happened, what got in the water, what what was said. But um, the offensive line play, uh, especially in the run game, we'll, we'll talk about the pass game, but the running game, uh, it's like they flipped a switch. And uh, we had, like, no 100-yard rushers, and then it was it was game on. Matt White joined us in, yeah. in March. Um, we, we had some O-line attrition, and Matt White joined us as coach last March and has been an asset to our football program and this university. Yeah, phenomenal phenomenal coach, and, and you can see you, the proof is in the pudding. We went from uh, okay – to pretty good in the in the uh on run game now the offensive passing game uh, let's talk a little bit about uh justin miller yeah. justin miller uh you know what what a he kind of an embodiment of the thunderbird uh player Just i would i would tough. agree with that yeah and an embodiment of this of this city that this university yes, that this football program t- tough as nails he's a coach's kid which is what we're building our football program around we like coaches we like tough hard-nosed coaches kids um J- justin lees with five or six career records he, he has a, he's he's in the top five in a couple of you know single season categories single game categories but the career records really stand for them st- stand out to me um if i miss one of these or mess it up yeah I, I apologize to y'all but he is the career leader here um he may be the career leader in games played plays played completions touchdowns yardage um it, he owns all of those and just really proud of him um uh I, I say um when when I'm thinking, so I say a lot on this show, but, but and 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 I'm thinking of the best way to word this. Um, have been really fortunate to be a small part of Justin's life over the last two years, and to be associated with his family. His dad's a class act, and what a job he did for us as offensive analyst this year, worth every single penny we paid him, and we only paid him a couple pennies. But Ryan Miller's a stud. Um, j- just really love those two. We're gonna pop up over the next year or two or three and go. Uh, darn, sure would like to have Justin play. Right, right. Yeah. And uh, you know Justin had had the opportunity to to bail, and he st- he stuck around, right? I mean, the reality is, new coach comes in, uh, didn't you didn't recruit Justin, but uh, for him to stick it out, stay with his guys, do his thing, 
and thrive in your system. I'm not, this is not a knock on you. I'm just saying Justin is a T bird. And regardless of the change in coaching staffs, regardless of any of that, he, uh, he dedicated himself to the university and to, to the guys he's playing next to. There's not a slide on you coach. I'm just saying, Hey, hey, Justin didn't leave, but I'll bet he thought about it once or twice. (laughs) As early as a couple of weeks ago, I'm sure. No, he, uh, he's a great, he's a great, uh, like I said, the embodiment of what it is to be a, a Thunderbird football player. Um, Coach, anything else that you want to discuss on uh, the, the Battle of the Axe? Now, let's move forward. Okay, sounds great. Uh, before we go to our next segment, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to spotlight our uh, sponsors. Uh, the, we have a, a phenomenal sponsor. Uh, they, they do a great job for us, the Warehouse Bar Plus Kitchen. Uh, great food. Uh, we say this every week. It's, it's episode 13, and uh, we just can't say it enough some of the nicest people great atmosphere it's it's a it's a great place to go relax have some fun um and enjoy some cocktails some beverages uh their kitchen is is great they do a great job over there um coach what what, what do you want to say about the war, uh, warehouse bar plus kitchen that we haven't said everybody knows all we, the superlatives everybody knows we love reggie so hey, the sliders yeah. there are great the fries um the buffalo wings uh, at buffalo wings are hard to come by in Cedar yeah. city utah um to find good ones but that they have good ones there we got to yeah. take doug doug yeah. was just mentioning Super that Bowl he, Sunday. he needs a he needs a spot and needs so a spot. yeah so we'll, we'll we'll take doug over there and, and uh uh wings though huh Wings. Yeah, they got some wings. They got some wings. They, yeah. Their their kitchen's good. Their uh, their fries are my favorite. I'm a wing guy, and you got to look. You got to look for them around here now. You you could share some fries with me because I know you love fries, but I, I know do you love. don't like a whole bucket. So I do. We'll <laughs> share. You can cheat off coaches' fries. Yeah. Anyway, while, while y'all are watching your weight, I'll have a basket of fries, <laughs> <That's> dipping <laughs> them in ranch. Don't even want to be able to see the fries completely covered in ranch. If we're gonna do. Hey, if we're gonna do it. Let's do it all. Let's the way. do it up. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's the way. Hey, 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 appreciate appre- Warehouse at Reggie. Appreciate your sponsorship. Absolutely. Appreciate your hey, your friendship and just all the support over the last two years. Yeah, he's 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 there with us on the road. He's he's come and seen us play a lot of different places and and uh, just a great outfit there at the Warehouse Bar Plus Kitchen. <clears throat> um, let's go. Let's go to our next segment. We got a lot. We got a lot to talk to in a little bit of time. Um, let's talk about the team. Let's 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 kind of change gears. And talk about the season as a whole. Um, Coach, um, this is the first winning season since 2017. Uh, 2017, uh, conference champs in the big sky. Lots have changed since then. We've had a change in conference, change in athletic directors a couple times. We've had a change in, in, in your staff, uh, change in, in the, into the UA, to the WAC and then to the UAC. Okay, we've, we've had a lot of, of disruption, um, but this year... Uh, we turned we turned the page into a winning season. Um, uh, just a few things that that I'm going to bring them up. We we can talk about them as you please. Undefeated against our former WAC opponents. Okay, so uh, there wasn't a WAC team that took a victory off us. Now we're the UAC, but you know, uh, just like to highlight that. Also undefeated uh, in the last four games against teams from Texas. So all three of the of the UAC teams, as well as uh, the, our last game last year against those folks down in Huntsville, Texas. We'll just I don't I don't even I don't even want to talk about the Bearcats. Anyway. For those of y'all out there, every time John made the trip to, trip to Huntsville, they lost. It's true. And then John skipped the trip last year and we it's went true. down there and won. I told Fitz flat out, I said, Hey, I'm never going to Huntsville. Shout again. shout out Dwight Sims. Shout out to Dwight and Crystal Sims. That they're they're the good luck charm when we go to Texas. Yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Dwight's the man. Yep. He's the best. Um, and then also, uh, there's a few things that we can talk to uh, talk about in our conference. We ended up tied for second, um, which is a great showing in the initial, we were picked eighth by the coaches. So it's, it's sometimes nice. Uh, you know, those preseason things don't really matter, but they can be a little fuel, uh, when you need it. And, uh, to finish tied for second in the conference is, uh, is, is great, especially where the expectations were eighth. Um, let's talk about there's 126 FCS teams in the country. Um, some of the things that our, our, our young men accomplished. Um, in, in all of 126 teams, we ended up sixth in tackles for loss, eighth in interceptions, uh, 15 in uh, turnovers caused, 16 in rushing defense. Um, you know, the defense was, was legitimate this year. 
Uh, shout out John Kelly and, and his crew. Uh, they really locked it down. Uh, it was we, we had a lot of close games, um, and it was it was a point here and a point there. But um, as the math figures out here, quite a quite a good defense. And then in conference in the defense, uh, first in passing efficiency defense, first in rushing yards per carry allowed, uh, second in scoring defense, second and third down efficiency. Um, third in total yards per play and fourth uh, in passing yards per attempt. I mean, this is this is going down the yard. Uh, this is a, this is a great list, and this is a, a great reminder, uh, Thunderbird Nation, of the effort that the defense put in this year. Our, let's, our let's def- talk our a little de- bit about yeah, it. Just, just really, really quickly, our defense, our defense over the last year went from a liability to an asset. It went, went from went from something that we had to guard against and coach against to us us trying to get them on the field. Yeah, right, let, let, let's go, men! And you knew what you were getting week in and week out for them. Uh, we really emphasize the tackles for loss, so not not surprising. And and John does a great job, and and Ryan Hunt and Sean Madison do a great job in the tackle for loss. Shea McClure at the linebacker position, but those kids really rally behind that one. And then the rushing yards, first and foremost, we're not going to let people run the football on us. And, and so the, those two. Two are, are really the ones we emphasize. Yes, sir. But, but um, happy with the way our defense played this year. Yeah, I like I like how you said it went from a liability to uh, to one of our strengths, and, yeah. and that's that's a testament to the young men. It's also a tempting uh, a testament to the coaches sure. uh, that that got figured out and either uh, was able to communicate what they wanted to, uh, and have it land on those on those young men. They were able to execute. Uh, talking about offense. Um, again, 126 teams in the country. We were seventh in sacks allowed, so great pass protection from the guys up front. Um, we were tenth in third down conversions at 46%. It's a great percentage. Twelfth uh, in fumbles lost, only four all year. Fifteenth um, in time of possession. Uh, that means we're we're converting third downs, running the football, and uh, being able to um, have the other team have to adjust to to our style of play. And then seventeenth in turnover margin. So we were turning them over a lot and not turning the ball over so much. Um, that's that's nationwide. And then and then stats in the conference. First in sacks allowed. Our guys kept uh, kept our QB clean. Kept his jersey nice and white or red or black, whatever we're wearing. Uh, and then uh, third in scoring offense and fifth in rushing offense. Uh, the the last one is you know we talked about rushing we talked about the lines we, we were dead last middle of the season <laughs> yeah like by a ways mm-hmm. and then to come back and and finish middle of the pack in in running uh, the football in our conference uh, it's a lot you know Braden uh, Whistler and and uh, and Targi and and the whole the whole crew up front uh, that was blocking for him great job uh, pulling that thing up from from last to to fifth in the conference that's that's exciting. Uh, let's talk about some individuals really quick. Justin Miller, you we, we mentioned him earlier about total yards, uh, passing yards, um, games played, snaps played, uh, touchdown, passing touchdowns. I mean, if it's QB record, he either has it or is right there. Uh, and and what and now you, and now he gets to go out a winner. Absolutely, and all all of that, and he got to be he got to leave a winning a winner, season. Winning season, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, Coach, I think it would be remiss if we didn't talk about Isaiah Wooden. Yep. Uh, he ranks second in all time in uh, for single season touchdowns with 14 this year. Phenomenal job. Uh, Tyson Poots has 15, and then is tied with Isaiah. He had a season that he had 14 as well. Also, one of the all time greats, obviously. And uh, he led the conference in receiving catches and touchdowns. So, that's I mean, uh, without Woody. Uh, what a great what a great weapon he was uh, and is still. I think he's got maybe a little more playing in yeah. his future. Um, but uh, shout out Isaiah Wooden for for being a, a potent uh, weapon. That great we can rely great on. two years. Yeah. I, Isaiah had a good two years. Um, I feel, feel lucky that the gentleman called me two years ago and said there, there's a, there's a baller there's a baller working at Sea World. Very unhappy. <laughs> um, I appreciate I appreciate that phone call. Yeah. Well, and and the reality is, uh, you know, he's had some some dark things happen in his life, and he's been able to to turn uh, the lights back on and uh, come back to Cedar City. Um, we've enjoyed him in our community, and uh, he shined his light here, uh, and that's that's exciting that we have the opportunity to to, to see Isaiah uh, come up to to Cedar City and do so many great things for Southern Utah University. So shout out 
Isaiah Wooden. Going to miss Isaiah in honesty here. Mm -hmm. Best of luck. Yeah. Um, any other individuals uh, that, that you want to highlight? Too, uh, too Connor many. Cullimore yeah, had too, a too many to name. phenomenal season as well. Yeah, we, we, we start down this road. It's going to go for a no, while. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah, the, 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 the seniors, the seniors, Robert Horsey's going to get to play some football next year and going to – uh, going to get to collect a check doing it, and we're excited about that. Isaiah's going to have an opportunity to play some football next year. Hey, excited about them. Um, it, to those seniors, and, and I get to talking about them, I'm going to leave them out. Two of the unsung heroes, Jordan Washington and Cody Coleman. Both um, balled out, by the uh, way, last about, game. Yeah, bad, oh. yeah we, we, we – we, we are not successful without them two on the field Saturday yeah. night, but those two, A.J. Wooden, A.J. Wooden, A.J. Felton. A.J. Felton, yeah. yeah. And, and his AJ. big senior season Number that seven. he had, good football players. So, yeah. um, going to miss them and going to miss some of the other seniors. Hey, Tim Patrick's a warrior now. People don't understand Tim Patrick battled injuries from the second week of camp all the way to the end. I don't know if he ever missed a rep, um, but, no, lo love the young man. He, Ethan Bolenbrook didn't have the senior year that he probably wanted, um, but he got he left here a winner and what a team player and a great young man he is from a great family but he battled he battled some things all fall that also yeah. um just really proud of those kids ha happy that i've been associated with them aubrey nelms aubrey nelms will go down as one of my favorite people slash players that, that i've ever coached um that regan's in the background laughing Re regan knows the relationship that aubrey and i have um but it but anyway hey cool kid yeah hey, cool kid and good football player and, and i'm leaving out somebody but sorry yeah yeah well uh if you're a senior and you didn't get named we love you yeah. uh and yeah, thanks for being in our program love y'all uh, love y'all the same hey yeah. aaron romero saw this thing to the end he did. did a nice job was a good teammate good person hey, aaron made some plays for us this year played some for us this year fall made some plays landon freeman same thing i'm um, gonna miss all those guys yeah um coach thanks for thanks for uh a great season uh, thank you for for coming to Cedar City and and uh, uh, being so engaged with the fans and engaged uh, with the program. Uh, you're always honest. You're always straight line. You're always uh, uh, no holds barred uh, when we're talking to Delane Fitzgerald. And I appreciate that from a host standpoint. Uh, we get a lot of talked about uh, during these uh, Mondays, and it's uh, I look forward to every single Monday. So appreciate you uh, and your your being on the show and uh, sharing your time with us. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, um, we have a, a special guest. We, we, we introduced him early in the show, but Visit Cedar City and Brian Head proudly presents our director of athletics, Doug Newth. John. Hey, thanks for having me. I yeah, appreciate you bet. it. Hey, yeah. before, before we get into um, looking ahead to next season, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't take this very well, and, and I apologize to you as a friend but uh he deserves a lot of credit i Amen. mean a lot of praise a lot of credit it's actually good that i'm here today rather uh, maybe not a student athlete because the student athlete might not say it the same way but you, no one understands all the work that goes on behind the scenes with delane uh and his staff i get to see it uh no one understands how great of a job he's doing academically with his with his team and his players i get to see that um no one understands how much community service and how much community engagement the football team does I get to see that and it's all because of Delane uh, he is building the program the right way uh, in a way that our fans and our community can be really proud right really proud not just what we do on the field not just what we do on Saturdays uh, but every day in the classroom every day in the community um, the the type of uh, the type of student athlete he's recruiting to bring here uh, is is I, I, was, I haven't been here that long but I've seen sort of the trend and the tra trajectory of our program and everyone knows we're winning on the field everyone knows that uh, but to see what we're doing off the field and the impact he's having with our young men is just incredible so we appreciate you Delane you're doing a great job thank you keep it rolling baby yeah keep it rolling. I love that that you see that winning is not just on the field winning is uh is winning in the classroom winning is winning in the yeah. community winning is winning on the field it's yeah. it's a whole thing and and you understand how many hours countless hours uh, are put into making sure these these young men are getting a what they need to succeed and and um as the athletic director i'm sure you're going to be helping out um as your role in in getting some things uh, for the program as well as from the coaching staff and from the community making sure these young men are are um going to class making sure that they are uh succeeding in the community 
and winning here at Southern Utah University is is a bigger thing than just on the field. Yeah, I mean, so. they're, they're, what what he's really doing is creating champions for life. I Amen. mean, these these young men are going to graduate this program. They're going to be great fathers. They're going to be great leaders. They're going to be great in the community. They're going to be great in the boardroom. They're going to be great in everything they do uh, because of the lessons they're learning through football, through uh, playing for Coach Fitz. So um, I told him one time, I don't know if you ever believed me, but but he's the kind of coach I wish I had when I was a student athlete. And I didn't play football, right? Tennis <laughs> tennis player, I know you guys make fun of me. It's not really a no, sport. No, it is, it um, is. But, but you know, the, the type of coach that Delane is is exactly the kind of person I wish I had played for. Sure. Um, and I don't know if my career would have changed direction or not, but it would have been the kind of person, the kind of quality, and the kind of characteristics of the person I'd want to I'd want to, I'd want coach my son someday. Yeah, here, here. Yeah. Excellent. Well, uh, Doug, um, you have some announcements to make, I think. Yeah. Uh, or at least what's on your mind. Well, what, we're here to talk about next year a little bit. Um, coach has, uh, has taught me not to look backwards. I think he's the coach never you – know, rip, rip, rip off the, the rear, rear view mirror mirrors. off. Yep. Yeah, we don't talk about last week or last 10 minutes or anything. But looking ahead to next year already, the um, you know, 2023 season just ended. Uh, we're super excited about the way it ended. But looking ahead to next year – as we speak right now, we are launching, um, uh, announcing our 2024 schedule. The full schedule should be out. It'll be out on our website. It'll be out on social, uh, social and digital media here as we speak. Um, and I also want to tell our fans that are watching and listening that um, you know we're we're going to have a little special ticket promotion here for folks that that want to renew their tickets. They want to get on board or stay on board with us for the 2024 season. So from now until February 7th, which is the second football signing date. Uh, anyone can renew their tickets or buy new season tickets at the 2023 price. Oh, fantastic. So that, that that's sort of um, maybe a hint at what's coming in 2024. <laughs> sounds but like, you, yeah, sounds like things are going to be... There, there uh, will be a price increase. Yes, yes. There will be a price increase in 2024. We are very aware of, of the economy. We are very aware of people's household budgets. Sure. We are not going to do anything crazy. We're not going to raise prices uh, to, to hurt anyone, uh, for sure. But, you know, in order to keep building the program, we've got to keep investing in the program sure. and, and that takes money. And, and I think our community has seen the proof in the pudding. They've seen what coach Fitz is building. It's well worth the investment. It's well worth, uh, the supporting the program. But yeah, in 2024, we're going to raise ticket prices a little bit, but for those that are listening right now, if, uh, you know, here, here's the sales pitch, right? Yeah. Jump, here's, jump here's in right now. Uh, you can go online, you can renew your tickets and you'll, you'll be paying the 2023, uh, price from now until February 7th. And then after that, we'll announce our new ticket prices and anything renewed or new at, at that point will be the new ticket price. So, Got it. well, Cedar City does love value. Oh, we all do. Right. Right. And yeah. so, so we're a value. We're pretty darn good. Uh, yeah. Value. yeah we're, we're, we're pretty exciting at home. We're going to keep it close to the vest. I know, unfortunately for the head coach, we're going to keep it close. It's not good for my health. <laughs> um, but we're, we're pretty darn good. And, and we return a bunch of good football players next year. Should yeah. be exciting. Oh, definitely worth the price of admission no matter what. And, uh, but the reality is, uh, look, these, these things, uh, they move in, uh, directions that, that, you know, they have to go. So, yeah. and, um, and, and for those that, now. yeah, for those that are watching at home right now on your social media, as you're, as you're seeing this come out, you know, we open with UC Davis. I mean, yes. At home. Really Perfect. good, really good ball, ball team. Um, it should be, you know, our, our first home game of the season. So we expect a big crowd, full crowd and great weather. And then we go, uh, on the road a couple, and then we come back for two weeks in a row, Tarleton and, and West Georgia, both at home, uh, both good programs. And then uh, Stephen F at home, and then we finish off the season with uh, with team down south, yeah, coming up to our place, um, you know, to finish off the season. And I think, you know, knock on wood, and and no one's going to add pressure more than this guy right here. <laughs> but I think that last home game of the year is playing for you know clinching a conference championship. Amen to that. And, and to beat to beat the Trailblazers at home. Oh yeah. To be right in the mix, we're going to be in the hunt. Hey, we're, 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 that's going to be a fun, fun right. game to run up the score and, and beat those guys again in our home place, mm -hmm. and, and uh, hopefully we're in the hunt for a championship. Yeah, we're writing the st we're writing the story for you, so you just gotta you just gotta get it to the end and no, and no pressure, push it over the, None. the None. finish line. But as 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 we're looking at the home schedule, we've got uh, UC Davis, Tarleton, Western Georgia, Stephen F. Austin, Utah Tech. Uh, all those games look like they should be a blast to Cal, watch. Cal Davis will be top 25. Yeah. Tarleton State will be top 25. Yeah. Um, West George will be exciting in here. Stephen F. Austin's going to bounce back from this fall, and they'll be pretty good here at home. And then finishing, f finishing, 
your your home slate with the school right down the roads. It's exciting, yeah. very exciting. Perfect. Um, anything else, uh, Doug? That that uh, you wanted to uh, tell the Thunderbird Nation? No, I'm excited. Obviously, this has uh, been a great season. Delane's got the program going in a great direction, and just uh, as I said, when you watch the trends and the trajectory of the program, uh, we're, we're going in a great direction. And he just mentioned this, the other schools are going to be ranked in the top 25. I don't know why the T-Birds aren't going to be right there, too, ranked in the top 25 next year, Coach. Yeah, I reckon, I reckon so. Yeah, hey, UTEP better watch their back. We're coming for all them Texas teams. So we got four in a row. We, we're, we're coming at you, UTEP, um, uh, on, on week two. And, and, hey, if we get a victory in the first, you know, two out of the first three, something like that, you never know. We could, we could be up there in the rankings. And we certainly have the, uh, the staff and the, and the young men to do it. We just got to go and execute. Yeah. Um, coach, any other final words? Yeah, and it needs needs to be some shout outs here, and we need to thank people and and the people behind the scenes, um, uh, equipment managers, Braden Hall and Joe. Um, yes, sir. Can you pronounce Joe's last name for me? Vaivaka. Vaivaka. Yeah, um, but but that they do a lot of work and, and don't get a lot of credit for it. But we want to shout out for them. Um, our bullpen and our coaching staff will know who that is. But our bullpen, all those young coaches that aren't getting paid enough money to live on in this town, sleeping on it, couches. It, there's six of them in one house right now, yeah. so that they can afford you know the Cedar City rent. Um, um, but those guys getting a start in their career and all the hard work they do in the film breakdown. But yeah, shout out to them. And then um, I, I want to shout out everybody that's followed us all year, both both the people out here that watch our games every Saturday night and the folks back home. Um, my, my family and friends back home t- turn our games on and our games, our seven o'clock games start at nine their time. Our six o'clock games start at eight their time, but they stay up late and watch us play on Saturday nights. But um, hey, much love to you guys. Uh, lo- love you to death. And thanks for all the support and shout outs and then i'm, I'm gonna end on this um this football season is a lot of fun a, a lot of fun for, for myself and our coaching staff therapeutic um refreshing and, and and here's why never in my career have i seen as many injuries and boo-boos as we had this fall um and then slash never in my career have i coached a team as young as this team um a couple of weeks ago and i and i like to i like to I like to chop it up with the officials every once in a while. But but I, the official says something, and I go, um, I said, our two tight ends don't even equal your age. And he looks at me, he goes, I'm only 40. I said, exactly. Our two tight ends that are on the field every play don't equal 40 years old right now. And he just looks at me, and his eyes are big around as a softball and just turns around and walks away. But they're, they're, that's just one example, our tight end position. But because of things that happen and boo-boos and, and this and that, and we, we rolled we rolled a bunch of freshmen and sophomores out there this week, this year. And here, here's, here's what I wanted to say, and I want to end on this. Um, I feel privileged, and it was really fun for myself and our coaching staff to – to sit back and be a part of a bunch of young men that fought through adversity, played their rear ends off day in and day out, game in and game out, and never for one second stopped believing in each other. A um, lot, lot of fun. And for all you guys in our football program, thank you. Thank you. Love you to death. Um, it, it, it was a great four months. Coach, uh, fitting fitting uh, tribute to a fantastic season. We'll just leave it there for athletic director Doug Newth. Head football coach, Delane Fitzgerald. I'm John Smith signing off. Go T-Birds. Go Thunderbirds.